Hello there. Um, this is me, Octavian. You might or might not know me. I mean, depending if you've come here from the Infima Games Discord server or channel. Uh, if you don't know me, I'm, as I said, Octavian. I work at Infima Games. I do a lot of the programming for our game assets, specifically for this realistic assault rifle template, which we sell on the Fab Marketplace. Now, I wanted to address a little bit of what we've been up to for the past long time because a lot of you have been kind of asking hey what have you guys been doing you know you, you guys don't put out updates and and so on and so forth and it, it's true we don't really put out a lot of updates so i thought hey let's start putting out some more updates now specifically what i want to talk about in this video is what we've been up to for the past few weeks since i last posted a dev dive if you haven't watched it, I'm going to put it in the description because I thought it was quite interesting. And then I stopped posting dev diaries because, hey, turns out editing pretty hard, pretty anxiety inducing. In any case, one of the things that I've been up to, other than fixing a ton of issues, has been ensuring that the third person works well and doesn't have any issues, which isn't the case yet. But, you know, we're pretty close. And although we're not entirely issue-less yet, um, what I wanted to show you is this new system that I added while I was fixing issues that I call the display holster system. And you can already see it. It's this thing where the character has weapons that are placed on its back, which we didn't have before in either of the dev diaries. You can see that we have a weapon that kind of bounces around a little bit. If I crouch, you can see that it moves a little bit. If I change to it, you can see that the other weapon goes there. And then it also moves around a bit. Especially if I jump, if I move around like this. So this system, we didn't really plan to implement for this update. This is one of those like unplanned things that kind of just happens where you're like, ah, it'd be interesting to kind of put the weapons on the character's back, you know? And it just happened. Now, essentially, the idea behind the system is that we have a few sockets on the character mesh, right? And here's where I get a little bit more technical. So, you know, if you don't want an explanation of how this works, then hey. But um, the idea is that we have a few sockets on the character skeletal mesh, specifically on here. And I called them rifle holster, right? Definitely need better names, but this is still placeholder. And these two sockets have currently a cars corresponding scene component right here which will eventually be deleted. But, <laughs> but the idea is that these two sockets will, in the animation blueprint of the character, have some sort of spring interpolation such that when the character moves, they will bounce around. Currently, that's not what's happening. Currently, these two scene components on the character blueprint are being uh, kind of moved around every tick right here with a spring interpolation. And this looks forward, I know, but you know, actually we're only moving the first one. So, you know, the second holster or the second socket, second display holster isn't even being moved. So, you know. Yeah, so that's one of the things that, that I've been working on a lot. Another one of the things that I've been doing over the past few days, and I think this is also been a very important fix that I wanted to ensure that we had has been making sure that the all the control rate functionality that we added and by the control rate functionality I'm referring to anything that is aim offsets so this which is procedural aim offsets these aren't animation aim offsets this is an aim offset that we made in control rate and as well as the turning animation, which is not an actual animation. This is a set of curves that are being played in a very specific order inside of a control ring. So it's, it's a procedural animation, if you will. If we look here, 
you can see that there's a lot of uh, rotate stuff, fancy foot rotation. There, there's a lot of rotating with curves. And all of this is the turning, pretty much. So that's this. I wanted to ensure that that wasn't frame rate dependent. It was very important to me. That if I set this to 15, it wouldn't become slower, which is something that happened by default. Same for the foot locking, which is the system where the, the character's feet go back to their position when you stop. It's also a system that's procedural and has no animations. It's made entirely inside of the control rig. So all these systems, the idea was kind of to build them in a way where they were frame rate independent. We've also been trying to refine a lot of the sliding animations over the past few days. We haven't managed to figure out exactly how to make the sliding animations feel quite as good as we wanted them to feel. But what we have managed to feel to make feel really good is the sliding, the actual sliding functionality that we have managed to make feel a lot better. So that's changed quite a lot since the past uh, release. So that's going to feel a lot better. And the animation is pretty good, but you can't really see the legs a lot when you slide. So that's, you know, some of this definitely improvable for a future update. There's also been a lot of ensuring that all the unarmed animations that we've made for this update worked while you were in every single stance. And we had to do a lot of kind of very specific stuff. Um, so we had to stop using additive animations, for example, specifically for unarmed and for certain animations, and start using layered blend per bone, just so we would be able to use them here when you're crouching, as well as when you're proning. So in these scenarios, we would have to use specific bones and only apply the montages to those bones, just so you would be able to punch in those scenarios. Because otherwise, it would look very, very weird. And even, even now, we still have some issues where if you, for example, transition while you're playing a montage, you can see that the characters spine still looks very weird. So those are still those are still things that we need to fix. And yeah, I think that's kind of all I wanted to show for this video. I know it's been pretty short, but I didn't really mean to make a long video. I wanted to make a short video just so you guys knew that we were alive and the update is almost done now. There's only a few small issues here and there and we're going to iron those out probably really quickly, hopefully anyway, but I'm going to try to make more of these, especially in this channel. And also check out the asset in the description. That one you definitely want to get. Get that one. Get